Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lydia, the Halfling Seamstress. Only today, I guess I'm Lydia, the Halfling Chef. For those of my subscribers that don't know me IRL, I went to college and graduated on my honor roll for culinary skills, which means that although this channel is mostly about sewing and history and geekery, I actually have far more professional training in cooking and baking. Being the nerd that I am, I love to study all aspects of history, and I find learning about the everyday details helps bring history to life and make it feel more... real. So as I'm learning about historical dress, I'm also studying historical cooking as well. And no one brings historical cooking to life better than the queen of Victorian cuisine herself, Mrs. Crocom. In case you haven't seen the videos, English Heritage has a series on YouTube called The Victorian Way, where they recreate some of the recipes used by actual historical cook at Audley End Manor, Avis Crocom. The episodes are beautifully shot, so cozy and comforting, and transport you back to the 1880s with a variety of recipes and a hearty dose of the quintessential Victorian wit. And as a cooking slash history geek, as soon as they released the official Victorian Way cookbook, I had to add it to my collection, and I have been dying to try out some of the recipes in here. So today, I'm going to attempt recreating my first Victorian recipe, Mrs. Crocom's trifle. Trifle always feels like a summery dessert to me, and I love me a good trifle, so it'll be really interesting to see how this recipe differs from modern recipes. So before I start down a rambly rabbit hole of cooking trivia, I'm just going to get started. Don't say it. Don't say it. I'm going to say it. For this recipe, you will need sponge cake, brandy, strawberry jam, crystallized ginger, biscuits, sherry, custard, whipping cream, sugar, fruits and candied flowers to decorate. Since the sponge cake is literally the base of the recipe, I decided to make it myself. You can buy sponge cake at the store, but all the attempts I saw didn't even come close to the quality of homemade. I used Mrs. Crocom's Savoy cake recipe, which is also in the cookbook, which was really easy to make, and it turned out perfect. It's a fatless sponge, and it has both a lightness and density that is perfect for a trifle. and it tastes lovely on its own too. 10 out of 10, make this sponge cake instead of buying inferior quality from the grocers. I'm going to start by laying the sponge cake in the bottom of the bowl. Then, pouring on the brandy. One quarter cup of brandy. You want to aim to coat all the sponge as evenly as you can. Then the strawberry jam gets spread over the sponge cake. Next I'm taking the crystallized ginger and chopping it up even finer. Most will be for inside the trifle, but I'm also reserving some of the nicest pieces for decoration on top. And then the ginger gets sprinkled over the sponge. The sponge biscuits then get layered on. 
The cookbook says to use ratafia biscuits or macaroons, but the YouTube video says to use sponge biscuits. And since I couldn't find ratafia biscuits and modern North American macaroons are different from Victorian era macaroons, I followed the video for this step. Then the sherry. I'm using Harvey's Bristol Cream, my favorite sherry. Half a cup for the trifle, right over top of the biscuits. Now the custard. I made it earlier in the day so it had a chance to cool to room temperature. I combined milk and heavy cream in a saucepan and then added vanilla. The recipe calls for vanilla beans, but since I didn't have any, I used vanilla paste, the next best thing. Then I warmed it over medium heat, taking care not to let it boil. While it warmed, I cracked four egg yolks and whisked them together with sugar. Once the milk mixture was steaming, but not bubbling, I added it to the eggs a little bit at a time. This step is important. If you add the milk too fast, it can curdle the eggs and make them lumpy. Then the mixture goes back in the pot, back on the stove, and gently heated until it thickens. You can tell a custard is the perfect texture when you can draw a line on the back of a spoon and the edges don't run back together. Then gelatin that's been bloomed in a bit of water gets added. The original recipe calls for ground almonds to also be added, but I've got food allergies and tend to avoid nuts in general, so I chose to leave them out. I put the custard back in the bowl to cool to room temperature and covered it directly with a bit of plastic wrap to prevent a skin from forming on the surface. Historically, this would have been done with a bit of parchment or wax paper. and then it gets spread evenly over all the trifle. So now we've reached the final step before decorating. Making the whipped cream. In the Victorian era, whipped cream would have been made by hand, using a whisk. Now, here's the thing. I know how to make whipped cream by hand. I have made whipped cream by hand many, many times. But right now, I don't want to. So I will take a page from Tasting History with Max Miller and argue that if they had had the technology at the time, they would have used the technology at the time. And I would wager that if Avis Crocombe had had a KitchenAid mixer in her kitchen at Audley End, she would have used it. So we're gonna make this whipped cream by machine. Swinging back into the kitchen for a moment, I'm adding all the cream into the mixer, turning it on a low speed and adding the sugar while it's running. Once the sugar is added, the speed can be turned up. And then it just runs until stiff peaks. If you've never made whipped cream at home, you'll know it's stiff peaks when you can turn the whisk or a spoon upside down and the dollop of whipped cream looks like a soft serve ice cream. Then the whipped cream goes into a piping bag. Fun fact, you can use a tall glass to hold your piping bag steady so that whatever you're putting into it doesn't go all over the place. 
And then we are going to pipe copious amounts of whipped cream onto the trifle, building it up in layers. If you're doing this in the summertime, you do want to work a little bit fast because body heat will start making the whipped cream deflate. And now it's time to decorate. Trifles have a lot of room for interpretation, even in the Victorian era, and I couldn't find Angelica, like in the picture, and I avoid nuts, so I went with fresh raspberries, candied ginger, and sugared flowers. And there we are, Victorian trifle as made by Mrs. Crocombe. Traditionally, this would have been made for the lord and lady of the house as opposed to the downstairs staff, but considering that I made this for myself and my friends and family, I'm gonna have a taste right now. Have to make sure you get all the layers. sponge and jam and biscuit and whipped cream and custard and every good thing. Victorian trifle. Mm. Oh, that is really good. That is really, 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 really good. <laughs> sponge cake, again, if you're making this recipe, use the Savoy cake recipe in the cookbook. It holds together so well and has that nice little dense bite that is just, mm. And the custard is lovely and creamy and the biscuits are nice and spongy, if spongy is a good word to use for food. Mmm. And crystallized ginger adds a really nice little occasional little bite of spice that is very nice. I am definitely going to finish this bowl right here, right now, and have more after supper. You can definitely take, taste the booze in it. <laughs> mm. And candied flour is perfect. Not exactly a dainty food. But if you're having a Victorian party, make this. <laughs> I will definitely make this again. Someday I hope to have lots of historical friends over and have Victorian and Edwardian foods and this will be dessert because this is amazing 
And I dare say this is the best trifle I've ever had. Definitely the most fun I've ever had making a trifle and I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm going to stop myself before I have another bowl full right now. But overall, that was a success. I love this trifle. This is amazing trifle. So thank you to English Heritage for inspiring this wacky little one-off project and sending me down a new rabbit hole of delightful Victorian recipes. I am definitely going to be cooking a lot more from the cookbook. Whether it ends up on this channel or not is yet to be seen, but there will be adventures. And so if you liked this video, this is very different from what I normally have on this channel, but if you did like my trifle making adventures, please feel free to like it, and I will see you all in my next video. Are you trying to be helpful? Are you trying to be a helpful poodle? Trifles are not for poodles. Today I took a Victorian food and made it fancy. <sighs> I didn't think this would have a blooper reel, but look at, look at that, it will.